today we are going to be continuing my One Brand Full Face series by doing a full face of e.l.f. Cosmetics. I am so incredibly excited about this one because I have a lot of products that I haven't tried out before and then a lot of favorite products. So if you're interested in seeing me do a full face of glam makeup using all e.l.f. Cosmetics products, then just keep on watching. All right, so I have all of my goodies here. I did place a rather large order on e.l.f. Cosmetics because there were a few things that I didn't previously have in my collection. So before I put on each product, I'll let you know if I have previously used it or if it is new to me. And obviously I will let you know my thoughts on every single product, let you know what's worth it. e.l.f. is killing it recently, their new stuff. So I thought it was a perfect time to do a full face one brand on e.l.f. when they're kind of like at their prime. I don't have a primer from e.l.f. I've tried some of them in the past and I haven't been a fan. Um, and you guys know me, I love primer, I can't skip it. So I did go ahead and apply my moisturizer, cleansed my face and did moisturizer like 20 minutes ago, let it sunk in to the skin. And then I am gonna prep additionally with the e.l.f. Dewy Coconut Long Lasting Setting Mist. The packaging is super cute on this. e.l.f. has uh, elevated their pricing in recent years, but I think their product packaging and product performance reflects that. So I'm not mad at paying a few extra dollars. It's still like the cheapest of the cheap at the drugstore, pretty much on par with Wet n Wild. Achieve a healthy looking glow with this coconut infused makeup setting mist. Our dewy setting mist helps give your makeup lasting power while the coconut is known to hydrate and condition the skin. Used to set your makeup or use throughout the day for a burst of coconut. So more of a setting spray, but I'm going to use it just to add an extra boost of hydration because I have dry ass skin and I need it. Oh, that's a really nice mister. I feel like I've never tried a setting spray from e.l.f. I don't, oh, that's very coconutty. I don't mind coconut, but if you don't like it, very coconutty. I really, really love that mister. I really love the smell. I do enjoy coconut though, so if you don't like the smell, 100% you will not like this. Speaking of complexion, we have the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation. I have never tried this before. They used to have, back in the day, like four shades of this and there was no way I could use it. This still looks a little deep for me. We will see, I'm pale as pale gets. I'm an NC15 from MAC as a reference. Um, so this is in 120 Pearl Neutral Undertone. This says it has a satin finish and a oil-free medium coverage. So I like a medium to full coverage. I like the customizable coverage though. I like being able to make it less coverage or more coverage. So medium is usually where I gravitate towards. Um, and all of Elf products are cruelty-free and vegan as well, which is awesome. And ironically, I am gonna be using my Sephora collection sponge. I do love the Elf Flawless Complexion Sponge. I just don't have one currently, and it slipped my mind to purchase one to use for this video. But I love Elf sponges, Elf brushes are really good as well. So I'm gonna try this out. Yeah, 120 Pearl. I have never tried this. I've heard good things about it. Ooh, it feels relatively thick. I actually really like that color match for me, so long as it doesn't oxidize. Feels pretty similar in consistency and coverage and finish to my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. Feels very similar. So I'm gonna add up one full pump extra just to see how we can build up the coverage. That there is how the foundation is looking on the skin. I think it looks really, really nice. I really had no to low expectations going into this for whatever reason, um, but it feels very, very similar to my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I kind of want to do a dupe video and see how they compare because I've been reaching for that one probably the most out of any of my foundations, so I'm very familiar with it. Before we go into concealer, I did want to go ahead and apply a little bit of lip balm to prep for hydration. This is one of their newer releases. It is the e.l.f. Ride or Die Lip Balm, and I picked up the shade Tough Cookie. I just thought it looked like a really pretty nude. It says, your lips, ride or die bestie, 100% vegan and cruelty free. I have swatched this on my hand just to see what it looks like, but I haven't actually tried it out, so. It actually feels more hydrating than I anticipated, and it smells like a light vanilla scent as well which I like, so. Okay, for concealer, no surprise, everyone is head over heels for the e.l.f. camo concealer. I've used the regular, I've used the hydrating. I don't really have a preference, to be honest, which is surprising, because I do have more dry skin, but right now I have the e.l.f. hydrating camo in my collection, and this is in Fair Rose, which is slightly pink. 
too pink for me but it's what I have so we're gonna go ahead and use it today to conceal the under eyes and any spots that I have this concealer if you've never tried it it's only a few dollars it's one of the best at the drugstore it's very on par with my covergirl true blend which is like one of my holy grail concealers ever ever if you've never tried that best drugstore concealer ever but this one's pretty similar in terms of consistency and coverage and all that. I probably did go in with too much of this to be honest. It's little goes a really long way. It's quite full coverage. Here's how the skin is looking with the concealer. I think it looks really, really nice. I'm now going to go in and set with one of my favorite, favorite products from e.l.f. This is definitely in the tops for me. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder, a newer product, newer-ish from them. Um, and mine is just in light and I love this. It is more of like a matte setting powder than you would maybe expect from something called Halo Glow. It just doesn't have a completely matte finish. So it's just a little less matte and a little less drying than your typical, which is really good for someone with dry skin that still wants to set with a powder. So I just go directly in with the sponge into my little lid here and I do like to bring that down to the sides of my nose as well because that's my main area that I will get creasing. Now I'm just gonna go in with my favorite powder brush. This is the Pro Airbrush 55 from Sephora and I'm just going to lightly dust the rest of the powder all over my face to set everything in place. For brows, I picked up two products that I have not used previously and am very excited to try. So I grabbed their it doesn't really say, but I'm assuming it's just like their e.l.f. brow pomade. And I got mine in taupe blonde, which looks like a perfect shade. So for this, I'm going to use my Sephora Pro 20 brush to do like mostly carving out the brows. And then for more of a detailed look and like the front of the brow, I have the Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. I've heard incredible things about this. Um, when I do my brows with pomade, I like to dip into the product itself and then just work it on the back of the lid. And then I like to start at the arch of my brow on the top. I really like the consistency of this though. It's not too stiff and it's not too creamy. So if it's too creamy and you go to brush it through, I find that it loses the shape really easily. All right, now I'm going to go in with the pencil and like feather the front of the brows. And then I want to brush them through to be a little bit lighter as well because they're looking a little, a little intense right now. Here's how the brows are looking. Um, as I said, definitely a little more warm toned than I would like. Hopefully when I complete everything, they will look less intense as well because I tried to brush them through as much as I could with the spoolie, but especially with the pencil side it really wanted to stay where I put it the product wasn't very workable once it was laid down if that makes sense so as of now I like the pomade better than I like the pencil for the consistency and then also for the color so I think the taupe pencil is just not it for me it's not cool toned enough I'm gonna move on now to define and like contour add definition to the face so I have bronzer blush and highlighters so many to choose from um, so the bronzer is completely new to me. I've never tried any of e.l.f. bronzers before, um, but I picked up this one. I think the shade looks really nice. Not too cool tone, not too warm tone. Nice in between and looks good for my fair skin, I think, hopefully. So this is in Forever Sun Kissed. I'm going to use my same uh, 55 that I use for my face powder. That is how I like to do things because the product just glides better once it's applied my face powder before. That's what I find. So I'm just going to go in with my 55 and I don't know how intense this is. So I'm really dusting the product off on the back of the component here. Pretty subtle because I really <laughs> dusted a lot of product away. Here's how the bronzer is looking. I think it looks really good to be honest. I'm not obsessed with the tone, but I like the way it blended. I like the consistency. I'll have to see how it looks with the final look. I think the brows, the warmth of them are really throwing me off to be honest. Let's go in with highlight. This is a product that I know I love. Definitely up there with the Halo Glow Setting Powder. This is the Inner Glow Glow Gleam Beam Palette. This is what it looks like. It's really, really pretty. I love using this shade, this shade, and this shade primarily. I don't really reach for the white and I don't reach for this one because it's too dark. I think I'm going to mix these two together, which are five and two, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to mix them together. I'm going to go in with my Morphe R36. 
my favorite highlight brush and I'm going to highlight my cupid's bow, my nose, and my cheekbones. You guys know I love my highlight. Some people think it's too much. I like it. I love it. It's just a beautiful formulation, especially for the price. Definitely one of my top products from them. I'm going to stop there. We might go in and add some later, probably. For blush, I do have three of their little bite size palettes here. I do have a full review and swatches of these on my arm and on my face, testing them, reviewing them. Spoiler, I like them. So I have the White Peach Duo, which looks like this. I won't be using this today because I'm not really a peachy, orangey warm toned on the face person. I like a more cool toned pink blush, you guys know this. Um, and then I have the Watermelon Duo, which looks like that. That's like my ideal blush shade, so I'll probably go in with this one. And then I also have the Lychee, which is like a little bit of a deeper burnt blush. So yeah, I'm gonna go in with Watermelon today because it's my favorite type of blush color to wear. And I'm going to use my Sephora Pro Blush 93 and just go into the blush here. I love the pigmentation of these, the color, they're blendable, they're easy to work with, and they're so inexpensive. So highly, highly recommend, especially if you're going to get use out of both the highlight and the blush. For me, I really just reach for the blush because I have other highlights that I like more, especially like in terms of shade, not necessarily the formulation. Blush just adds so much more dimension to the face and makes you look awake, especially as a pale person. I really can't do a look without blush. I rather have blush than like just bronzer and highlight. I really love all three though because it really sculpts the face, but if I had to pick one, it's always gonna be blush. And then I am going to go in and do my lip products before I do my eyes so that I can have my eye look complement my lips. I kind of want to do a simpler eye today, so I want to make sure that it matches with the lips. So I do have a liquid matte lipstick and a lip plumping gloss, both of which are new products to me, but I know that these are nice formulas. I've heard a lot about them online and I've just never tried really elf lip products at all. So I have the liquid matte lipstick and this is in the shade Blushing Rose. Definitely more of like a deep fall cool toned pink nude, I would say. And then for the gloss, I have Sparkling Rose which is definitely more up my alley color wise. So that's the liquid lip and that's the gloss, but I'm gonna combine them because it's what I ordered and I honestly thought that the liquid lip would be more pink looking online, but it's okay, I'll cover it in the gloss anyway. So we'll use this one as our base and do a slight overline because that's what I like to do. This here is how the lip looks on its own. It's like a really pretty 90s nude, to be honest. I really do like that more than I thought I would on me. Feels very thin, dries down pretty nicely, but not like too drying, but that's probably also attributed to the lip balm we have underneath. All right, now we're gonna go in with the super Barbie pink gloss, which doesn't really go with this lip color, but we're gonna do it anyway. And this is a plumping gloss formula. I don't know if it's plumping in like the traditional sense or it just makes your lips look juicier. We'll see. And it's not too thin of a formula, but it definitely has some pigment to it. Not too thick though either. We're definitely getting a more muted version of this color with the liquid lip underneath. This is how the lip combo looks together. I'm actually kind of obsessed with that lip combo. I like how the liquid lip muted the super pinkiness of the gloss. And it is a little bit like tingling in the traditional plumping sense, but very, very light compared to something like the Too Faced Lip Injection. So for eyeshadow, I do have some of the bite size palettes, but I decided that I want to use the e.l.f. Retro Paradise palette. This is such a gorgeous palette from e.l.f. I've included it in favorites videos. I've talked very highly of it on my channel. The mattes are gorgeous. The shimmers are gorgeous. The shade selection, like the color story is just such a dream. Absolutely gorgeous. It's like the perfect warm tone palette, but then you also have pops of color. It's just gorgeous. So I'm going to keep it pretty neutral today. I'll probably go in with like browns, golds, I want to be basic. I'm just feeling it today. To start off this look, I'm going to go in with this mid-toned brown called Sandy Bum. Add in some warmth and definition. This is a slightly more like kickback powdery formula to work with, kind of reminiscent of Anastasia shadows, but if you just go in with a little and really blend them out, you can get a really nice look. And now I'm going to take the shade here, this nice gold called Fortuna, all over my lid. And I'm 
using my Sephora Pro 15 shadow to do this. I did hop off camera to complete my eyeshadow. I honestly just did exactly what I told you guys. Two shadows in this whole look, just that one shade on the crease and the one shade on the lid. And then I popped on these e.l.f. falsies. I'd never tried fake lashes from e.l.f. before. I know that Makeup with Jazz, Make Me Up Jazz something is obsessed with one of their lash shades or lash styles, lash shades. Uh, I know that she's obsessed with one of their lash styles. I wasn't able to get my hands on those ones, so I picked up the pair Social Butterfly, and this is how they look. They're super, super pretty, but definitely too much for me on the day-to-day, -day, even like these are like New Year's Eve or birthday lashes for me. I would not wear these hardly ever. Um, but they are really pretty and they definitely glam up the look and it's nice that they have lashes that look this nice at such an affordable cost. That is the completed look. I am really happy with how it turned out. Overall for me, there's a lot of standout products. The only flop for me really was the lashes, I guess, technically because I wouldn't really wear them that much, but I think they're very pretty if you're into that look. Um, and then the brows, I'm not super into. I think they're a little too warm toned. It comes together in the end, but I'm not obsessed. And then I'm not obsessed with the bronzer either, but I don't think that it's bad. So there really weren't any flops in this video, which is very exciting. I would say out of the products that were new to me today, I was most impressed with the plumping gloss, the dewy spray, and the foundation. I think those three are really standouts for me and I'm excited to keep playing around with them. And then I used a lot of products from e.l.f. that I knew I already loved. So I think it's incredible that you can create like a full face, super glam, very pretty going out look with products this inexpensive and have it turn out like this. That is it for today's video. If you you did like this video, you learned something, found the information helpful, like the look, whatever it is, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already. It really does help me out and means a lot to me. And as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I hope that you have or had an absolutely awesome day. Bye!